This is the NSO RAW 80, the car you most probably never heard of, but which came before the Audi era at NSO and which was the first production car in the world to have a rotary one kill engine with two pistons. It also has a weird design with the back telling you always that it was meant to be the front, since the back window is more inclined than the front windshield. But it is a masterpiece of engineering courage. Today we are going to discover the intriguing story and engineering of the NSU RAW 80 and explore the car near me. Because I'm Toma and you're watching Timeless Driving. Few car enthusiasts today do even remember such a German car brand like NSU, but it is easier to think of it as one of the brands that in the 1970s finally formed the Audi brand we know today. Before that merge with Audi though, NSU was a brand that often fascinated with visionary designs and quite bold engineering solutions. Some of those solutions were then adopted and used by other manufacturers for such a long time and so intensively that we came to attribute such innovations to those other brands. Think of the rotary engine or one kill engine as it is often called. What brand comes into your mind when you think of the rotary engine? Most probably Mazda and its RX models in a long series of generations. But there is more to say. Actually NSU was the first car manufacturer in the world to start working with Felix Wankel on a future production rotary engine. Some of us may remember that mostly at the beginning of 1970s quite a lot of car manufacturers were exploring and developing rotary engines. The revolutionary construction they brought where every stroke is a power stroke, the much higher output they were able to produce as a result, seemed like the next big thing manufacturers couldn't afford to miss. So Mercedes created the C111 concept in 1969 with a rotor engine. Alfa Romeo tried one apparently but ended its program in 1973. Nissan explored the opportunity of producing one in 1972. Chevrolet created an experimental Corvette with a rotor engine in 1973. Even Aftovaz in the USSR created a division in 1973 responsible for exploring rotor engines and in 1979 it produced the first experimental Lada with such an engine. Of course, much earlier than that, Citroën had its M35 limited production model launched in 1970 with its first rotor engine. But Citroën is a special case because they founded a joint venture together with NSU as a partnership to develop rotary engines using the experience NSU already had. And the engine from Citroën M35 is basically half of the engine of this NSU RAW 80 we explore today. Because at NSU everything happened even earlier in time, in the 1960s. The first ever production car in the world with a rotary engine was NSU Spider, launched in 1963. It had a single rotor 1 liter engine developing 54 horsepower. It was the first on the market but in a niche segment with a moderate power. And the car we are exploring today, NSU RAW 80, was launched 4 years after the Spider in 1967. And it already had a 2 rotor engine under the bonnet, being also the first large scale production model in the world to have more than one rotor in its engine. Some of us may already ask, hey what about Mazda, what about the renowned Cosmos Sport 110S? also credited to be the first in the world with a two-rotor one-kill engine. Well, Mazda was cooperating in studying and competing in launching the models with NSU. After they missed the opportunity to have the first production rotor engine car in the world because of the NSU Spider, they showcased the prototype of Cosmos Sport in the same year, in 1963. But it was a prototype with a revolutionary engine, not a car ready for production. In fact, they needed four more years to get it closer to a production stage. And again in 1967 it was clear that in autumn NSU will have a model with two rotors launched. Mazda couldn't afford to miss the milestone once again. So in May they technically launched the Cosmos Sport as the first vehicle with two rotor engine. But they didn't have a factory assembly line ready for mass production. So they manufactured it manually a car per day to be able to hold that title technically. And in autumn NSU was ready for the launch of its own model. This time an actual serious model, the first large-scale model with two rotors, ready to go into full production. 
Just imagine after 1963, rotary engines were already seen as a possible revolution in the industry. And then in 1967, NSU strikes again with an even bolder step, launching a double a rotary engine with two rotors, put one near another, to join their forces in powering the crankshaft with immense engineering benefits. Everybody was fascinated by this new NSU model. When this car was presented at Frankfurt Motor Show in 1967, its engine was so mind-blowing and revolutionary that it needed a press release of 80 pages in which NSU explained to car journalists how it works. Well, and that was the short version addressed to people who were supposed to understand a bit faster the deep technical subjects. The two rotors had 995 cubic centimeters in total, so basically the same almost one liter as the earlier engine from 1963. But because they were two rotors, the operating cycles of the engine made it much more balanced with a much more linear power delivery. NSU have meanwhile mastered this construction so profoundly on output that it managed to make this new engine from row 80 deliver 115 horsepower. So basically this engine offered an output of 115 horsepower per liter in 1967. That was something unheard of in those times. Mazda Cosmosport, by the way, had 110 horsepower from two rotors totaling a similar size of one liter. And it was this car, the NSU Ro 80, that set the automotive world on fire and made everybody understand that rotary engines may be suitable not only for niche sport cars, but even for family sedans. So almost every other manufacturer either started exploring rotary engines or partnered with NSU. And the innovations in the NSU Ro 80 were not only on the engine. Even its silhouette was innovative and futuristic with a strange shape for rear doors and that strange rear window angle. But that shape paid off with an aerodynamic coefficient of 0.35. Audi's later slogan, Vorsprung dur Technik or Progress through Technology, most probably has its roots here, in this fantastic model. You must see it, the miracle of engineering under the bonnet. Yes, this is the legendary two-rotor one-cal engine of the NSU Row 80. Just imagine it has 41 cm in length, 34 cm in width and the same 34 cm in height. For those who use inches, it has 16.1 inches in length, 12.2 inches in width and the same 12.2 inches in height, while delivering 115 horsepower. And the entire engine weights only 101 kg or 223 pounds. Initial sale date 8 December 1972, sold in Uri to a small town near Bern, Switzerland to a lawyer, then to a medical doctor in the same town, then two more owners in Emmental and Valai. So this car had owners all around Switzerland, but in Switzerland only. And it may sound surprising for Mazda owners with one cal engines, but this car has run 99,000 kilometers with this original engine and everything is still in excellent shape even after more than 50 years. Let's have a look inside this NSU Ro 80. Timeless design all over here. Very symmetric and clear dials with nicely dispersed indicating lights. You could also have some nice color combinations that made this car feel quite elevated. Well, that's quite a lot of space here in the back. I'm amazed by what NSU Row 80 was supposed to offer to its rear passengers back then. These rear seats are from a time when rear passengers often had soft and deep couches in a car with a greater comfort than in a home living room. You see, we have a gearbox ladder here to change gears, but we don't have a clutch pedal. It's all thanks to an innovative vacuum-operated clutch that made this car a semi-automatic one with three gears. You basically had three gears to select from with this lever, like in a manual gearbox, but you didn't have to press a clutch pedal because it understood when you wanted to decouple and couple a gear and it operated automatically. So you only had to move the lever in the right gear. And the shifting scheme was one that put the second and the third gear in one line for a sportier driving. 
and you could actually start with the second if you wanted and could drive within the city speed limits with only that second gear for getting about changing gears. And on the Autobahn the third gear made this car capable of achieving 180 km an hour or 112 miles per hour. The most important moment is here. Let's start the engine that made this car a legend. Okay, no clutch as I said, so start is a bit unusual. Yes, I have forgotten for a while about that special shifting scheme and put it in reverse. My mistake, sorry for that. That is how this legend sounds today, 56 years after this car and this engine fascinated the world. Even though the long-term reliability of these engines wasn't great and the rotor engines eventually have been dropped after the merge with Audi, the courage for innovation and technology of the Ro 80 eventually formed Audi's character in the 70s, 80s and 90s. During its career, 37,374 NSU Ro 80 have been produced until 1977 and we know the exact number thanks to a picture made with the last car leaving the assembly line at the factory. So it's rare enough to be a collectible car sought after. It is rare enough to make me feel special today just to sit in this car, found in Switzerland and hear its engine after years of admiring it. But the unique and ambitious engineering of the NSU Ro 80 have contributed even more in making a legend out of it that fascinates even now, more than half a century after its premiere.